My name is Chris Halton, and I'm a historian, researcher, writer, and explorer of the unknown. My style is very old school, but with courtesy and respect for the dead. My work takes me to undiscovered places, hidden realms and ancient spaces, which are hitherto unknown to the modern world or seldomly explored. These mostly forgotten relics of towels yet to be shared and dark secrets rarely shown. As a former police detective, I have no fear of the dead, but a respect and a willingness to learn and share as you join me on another journey back into the shadows of time and to those that pass before us. Today I've returned to the ruins of St Mary at Tivishal St Mary in Norfolk and as you recall I came here I believe around about two years ago with Eddie and we picked up quite a bit of activity and a small piece that you can see here. From my original visit I shared the history of the site and also the paranormal activities which have been reported to have taken place. And rather than end this repetition, here is the original clip of my first visit to explain the history for those of you who may not be aware of this particular location. It was built during the medieval period, but over the centuries it appears to have been badly maintained, certainly by the year 1702, the clergy here were extremely concerned about the soft fabric of the church and were worried that it might collapse. The deterioration of the church continued into the early part of the 20th century when it was re-thatched, so the church had life yet once more. And this continued all the way through World War II with enemy raids coming across from Germany, bombing airfields in England, but they avoided this church. And so at the end of World War II, its future, it seemed, may have been assured. However, in 1949, an RAF jet, possibly a Gloucester Meteor, which would have been current issue at that time, was actually practicing a low flyover. And as it came in rather low towards a clump of woods nearby, the pilot realized that the jet was going to plunge into the church tower, which suddenly loomed in front of it. So the pilot, resting the controls of the aircraft, was able to nose it up just before the point of collision. And as the plane passed over the church tower, the vibrations caused by the thunderous roar of those engines was enough to shake the tower to bits. And the church, unfortunately, became redundant at a stroke when the tower collapsed through the thatched roof and into the nave. The church was all but ruined. The stained glass from the medieval stained glass that existed here was removed and taken to a nearby church at Tivitil St. Margaret. And that's where the glass lies today, along with the worshippers who transferred from this ruin to the other church. And of course, the RAF at the time denied all responsibility for this accident and reported that no aircraft had flown over the woods. It was suggested by other sources that it was a supersonic bang, but at that time of history that would have been quite impossible, and particularly so with a Gloucester Meteor, which wasn't quite capable of hitting those kind of speeds. However, where we are today now, we're standing inside a ruin which also represents a small country park. There are places that are laid out for growing wildflowers and gardens, there's a little country walk that goes through the cemetery, and the cemetery here is still used for burials. So obviously a level of respect has to be paid when walking around this particular site. And it's such a shame, this church was mentioned in 1086 in the Doomsday Book. There it was, black and white, this church existed. And now it only exists as a ruin. 
but a room of a very strange history as far as the paranormal. According to people that have visited the site at night, they have seen bright lights emerging from inside the chapel and also have seen, allegedly seen, that of a clergyman in 18th century clothing who is seen to walk through the chancel and into the nave of the church. What we're hoping to do is to return later tonight, hopefully during the hours of darkness, and perform another investigation. Now, from the original investigation, we never used the services of a ghost box, and we did pick up some EVP, so this time we're going to use the ghost box, and I'm hopeful we're going to pick up a lot more activity. And I hope that you can join us. On my last investigation, of course, I was joined by Eddie, and Eddie's joining me this time too. And I'm going to bring Eddie over to say a few words about this particular location, and of course, what he's hoping to pick up later on this evening. Well, Eddie, thank you again for joining me here today on this reinvestigation of Tivishaw St. Mary. <laughs> what was your experiences last time you were here? It's quite amazing. Absolutely loved it. That owl was wonderful. I was watching back on video. Oh, I was often watch it. The owl hooting and me just going, hello. That was just wonderful, that was. I love that. But paranormal side, the one thing I did find is that we're in here and all of a sudden you go, hey, 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 hey. And I said, what? You said, there was a voice. You played them back and there was no voice, was there? That's often the case, I'm afraid. But the one that I got, on my camcorder, there was the voice that you there heard. There was a voice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's the problem, you see, with AVP. When you hear something, it doesn't always translate to camera. And quite often what you don't hear is what you hear later on on camera. And on that occasion, of course, I heard it, but it wasn't on my camera, but it was recorded on yep. Eddie's. And that's the way it works here. I'm certainly hopeful tonight that we're going to pick up a lot more activity than we did the last time. As I remember, it was a very cold winter's day, wasn't it? It was pretty chilly. It was yeah. very chilly. So hopefully tonight we'll be more successful. Any last words? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Really am. Really looking forward to it. Just walked up the ramp, which is basically the rubble of the original tower. And as I'm walking up the ramp, slightly elevated as I'm reaching the top of the pile, this energy starts to draw in a lot more closely. It's much heavier very very strong energy source there so that could be something worth exploring tonight but uh, yeah that, that was interesting and I want Eddie to go up there and fit it himself. Eddie come up to the top and tell me if you feel anything that I felt. Could be a bit slow on this I'm afraid. Ooh there's definitely a feel isn't there? As you get towards the top and oh, that's going to be difficult but Definitely stronger. This is actually what I felt early on. Well, the further you go up, the stronger it will get. I'm not going to go further, but uh, what I'm going to do, uh, obviously, reason the old arthritis because I'm yeah. slow. Oh no, I appreciate that. But uh, that's here. That's what I felt down there. You felt that down there, in. yeah. As we actually finished doing the actual interview and that, and talk through and that. It completely changed. Those headaches had gone. But the one thing I did feel was a really strong central pain in my chest. A oh, punch in the chest. And uh, I felt as though whoever it was had a heart attack. Oh, right. Perhaps so that will come back a bit later tonight. Possible. But yeah, definitely up there, there's a, a core energy spot. Definitely a feeling. Definitely like, a stronger feeling. So I'm definitely going up there tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to stay down because uh, the old arthritis don't No, I'll it. go up there <laughs> and we'll see what we get. Okay. Okay. Okay, we've returned to Tivishaw St. Mary. It's uh, now completely dark. During the time that we were here, as we were drawing into darkness, we could certainly feel energy points around this particular site. One which particularly attracted me was up by the remains of the tower, actually climbing up to the left-hand side of the rubble into the tower. There was definitely a very, very strong atmosphere building there. I don't feel anything remotely unpleasant. It's a very congenial site, for want of a better word to describe it. 
And I'm hoping tonight we're going to employ the use of the ghost box in addition to normal camera use, where last time we picked up EVP. And hopefully it will be something which will be enjoyed and fascinated by all who see this particular investigation. I'm certainly looking forward to it tonight, and I know Eddie is. I'll just bring Eddie over to you briefly, and he can give his input on what he's felt since he's been back here and what he's planning to do tonight. OK, what, how's it for you tonight? It's interesting, isn't it? I had a feeling as I came through the gate, just where we parked, it was quite strong. Oh, it's definitely um, that, yeah. Then as we sort of made our way towards the church, slowly start to diminish. But then they've come into the church, it's sort of like, ooh, that's quite strong. Well, I mentioned that earlier, when it was dusk, I went up to the top of the, the pile of rubble, yeah. and you went there too, yep. and, and you felt a definite change oh, of energy. definitely change. Very definitely. strong there, wasn't yeah, it? very much so. I think, I get the impression, it's just an impression, I, I think that perhaps there's people hiding up there, I don't know, <laughs> but it's just a general feeling yeah, that I get. Could be. So you've got your you've got a camera set up on an archway. Yeah, I went back to that uh, little yeah. rascal mm -hmm. uh, on the tripod actually down there, and I went back to it and bang, hitting quite strong. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we might get some EVPs. Well, hopefully, so yeah, we absolutely. Look to seeing what happens, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we get something really really cool tonight. Oh, you're not the only one. <laughs> you can only say, just wishing. So that's about the sides of it. We're about to start now, and thank you for tuning in. OK, now I'm going to open up to Spirit to try and get this investigation moving. Um, I'm actually standing inside the Chancellor area, so this should be quite interesting. I come here in peace, love and light. I mean, you know harm or disrespect. I've come here with my friend Eddie to connect with you, to make some level of spiritual, meaningful contact. We haven't come here to offend you. We haven't come here to desecrate this site. We've come here in love and respect. We were here some time ago. We never caused you any problems then. And we hope that you're able to reciprocate our respect for you by making some level of contact. There is definitely a, a priest here, definitely a priest. Um, he's wearing a he's wearing a a white wig down to his shoulders. I assume it's a wig because he's an elderly man and it's a full head of hair and it's curled at the fringes. He's wearing something like a a white top and I, I can't give you the correct terminology for what I'm seeing but it's like a, a tie of some description a, a religious thing like a um, it's like a double forked necktie for want of a better word it's something that he's wearing over a vestment and he's probably in his 60s He's very thin-faced. His skin is very, very wizened. It's very, very um, creased and aged. And he's got a very, very thin mouth. And I can see him in my third eye as clear as day. And the impression I have is that he comes from the Tau side of the church but he's here amongst us, and I'm wondering perhaps that when I climb the rubble by the church tower today, or the remains of the tower, I'm wondering whether what I felt in there was this particular person. Now, I do believe from memory from the last time I was here that the church is allegedly haunted by a priest, and perhaps it's wishful, wishful suggestion on my part that I'm making this statement, but I'm genuinely seeing this person, and it's quite as clear as day in my mind. He's not aggressive. There is nothing negative about him at all. 
I would even say that he's particularly interested in what we're doing here. It's not a residual energy. He knows that we're not damaging the site. So he doesn't see us as a threat, but he's here. This is his domain. He's the guardian of this church, for want of a better way of describing it. And I'm hoping he's going to reach out to us. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And when you come to sites, you don't have any... Well, sometimes you do. Sometimes you pick up mental impressions. But tonight, this has really, really attacked me, as it were. It's really drawn this out of me. I can actually see this man as, as clear as day in my mind. He's got, every, he's got, as I say, he has a very thin face, a very thin nose. But his skin is particularly noticeable because he's got acne and it's got age. Um, his face is definitely aged. But he's a, a kindly person. There's nothing negative about him at all. So it'd be interesting to see whether or not, whether he is prepared to communicate with us. Could you give us a sign or an indication of your presence, please? A car going past. The church is on the, literally on the corner, on a bend on the country lane, and we do get a few vehicles passing through here. Could you give us a sign, please, of your presence here with us tonight? Could you tell me your name, please? I've got a name. One name that has come to me, and I, I don't know whether it's the priest, is uh, Josiah Smallwood is the name. It's just flashed in my mind. I can't connect it directly with him. I wouldn't even guess at what his name would be, but it's a name that's just flashed up. Sorry, what were you saying, Eddie? The name I got was Raymond Archibald. Raymond Archibald. That's the name that I got. Well, Archibald is a surname? Yeah. Okay. I thought so anyway, but I've also got Raymond. Really. Eddie's got Raymond Archibald. Who knows? It could be either one of the two, or, or maybe none at all. <laughs> Possibly none at all, but we have to wait and see on that one. Totally. It's quite draining, though. Having said that it's not negative, I can actually feel a drain of energy. Oh, go, spirit. You're going to get that anyway. Could any friendly persons in spirit, could you give us an indication that you're here with us tonight? Could you make a noise? Could you do something to give us an indication, please? Another car coming past. Could you give us an indication, please, of your presence? Do you want to open up, Eddie? Do you want to ask any questions? Just seeing if I can pick up at the moment. I keep seeing just like little sprinkles of light over the towel area. I think I saw that last time. Very, very tiny dots of energy. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, you got it last time. I remember you saying Yeah. It's back there again tonight. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is take the camera down to the rubble pile, where, which is the actual remains of the church tower, and see whether or not we can pick something up from there. It'd be interesting. OK, I'm now... In fact, behind me is the rubble pile, which I climbed earlier today, where we picked up a lot of energy. I'm hoping that something could be elicited from me. OK, I'm going up the slope by the bell tower, or what's left of it. Yeah, it's very, very, very dangerous here. OK, I'm on the top of the slope now. 
Any persons in spirit, could you give me a sign of your presence, please? I can feel you very strongly here. I'm litching up against the stump of the bell tower. Please, could you give me a sign? If you can get some kind of perspective from here. I'm actually on against the back wall of the bell tower. So the whole front section has completely disappeared because it fell into the church and destroyed it. And if I look around here, as you can see, there is an awful lot of plants here. A lot of it's bramble, so as soon as you make contact with it, it's stuck to you. Yeah, it's very, very heavy on my chest. Not, not in a very bad way, but it's there, you know. My heart. That's what I've been getting. Right, I'm coming down. I'm not. I'm not sensing anything direct. I'm just feeling this energy around me. Right, this is the problem. It's the. It's this bramble all over the ground, as you can see here. You know, one, one wrong foot, and I go tumbling down the side of the bell tower. There's more bramble here. Wow. <laughs> it's really, really, really dangerous up there. It's very slippery underfoot. The ground is covered in bramble and there's bramble all around you. So walking up a slippery slope with all of that around you on a night like this is uh, tempting providence, I think. You said you had chest problems. You said you had chest problems. You said you had chest problems. Me? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it just felt very heavy on my chest. Yeah, I had that earlier on. When I got, so it was very, heart very attack, heavy. heart attack feeling. Yeah, so it's certainly starting to rain now, which is not good but there's not much we can do about that. Just yeah. gonna hope that it's gonna pass very quickly. Otherwise we're gonna have to wrap and pack. Indeed. Sadly so. Could you let us know you're here, please? If you could try and say something, please. Were you a vicar here? Was your name Raymond? And that heart attack feeling again. Really, really strong in the chest. If anyone sees white flashes or silver flashes on the screen, that's raindrops. I do. There's lots of it. So I get you just there. And I wonder, did you pass with a heart attack? Did you have pain in your chest? Did you stay here because you love the place? Tell me. Bird. Yes, it's a pigeon. <laughs> Is it a pigeon though? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's definitely a no, pigeon. I think so.
пяти винтиоли стять. I think it's beautiful. It must have looked wonderful in your day. Pang again right in the chest. Pang again. Another one in the head. Not we, running heavily, is it? Ah, it's just sort of like drizzly, and that's it. Were you a vicar here? Can you touch one of us? Do you consider yourself a protector of the church? Oh, a foul smell. Oh, a really pooey smell. Just went right across me. Got me a sense of smell, I'm afraid. I had them blasted out in the pig farms. Yeah, no, it's a really, really foul pig smell. Foul smell. You know, like the smell of pig, yeah. pig poo. That's what I'm yeah. smelling. Mm -hmm. But it was just for about maybe one second and then it evaporated just just disappeared completely i mean if there were pigs spraying on the fields we would have smelt this all the time yeah, absolutely we were farmer i think most of them were maybe we were farmer great to know my name's eddie my name is chris we come here still with friends we haven't come here to cause you any problems. We haven't come here to damage this site. We've come here to appreciate it and those that worshipped and lived here. So basically all we're here for is to find out about you as a friend. How long has it been since you've had a chance to talk to someone in the living world now, I know you're living in spirit. What would you like to tell us? This rain's getting worse. Yeah, possible voice there. No, that rain's starting to build up. It is. It's really starting to get quite heavier with the rain. It might be a shower which might pass over, but for this moment in time, we're going to have to abandon the investigation temporarily, return to our car, and then come back a little bit later. And we'll do a ghost box session. But for now, there's nothing much more we can do here other than get wet, so I'm not prepared <laughs> to do that. So we're just going to pack everything away very quickly and then come back. As you can see, there's always lots of equipment I've got to pack away. A tripod being one of them. This is really annoying, isn't it? Yeah, such a pity. I'm in a dilemma. We've carried out a paranormal investigation inside the ruins conventionally, but we haven't done a ghost box session. So, as a way of compensation, perhaps, what we intend to do is try and perform a ghost box session in the car because we're next to the church ruins and hopefully they will be able to make a level of contact with us. So we've never done this before, a ghost box session in a car, but we are literally parked next to the church. So we're within the church grounds, as it were, on the edge. Okay, the blue light that you can see on the bottom left corner, that is the light coming off the speaker. And immediately below that is the ghost box. It's close to the front of the camera lens. I'm hoping that it will facilitate something. So let's try and open up. Could you tell me your name, please? Oh, 
Are there any church members here? Could anyone tell me your name, please? What was that? Stewardess, something like that, I okay. Something like that. Could you repeat that, please? My name is Chris. I've come from Essex. I've come from Brandon. My name is Eddie. Can you tell me your name, please? We get responses. But the trouble is I can't turn the speakers up too loud because it would distort the audio on the camera. Well, what I really loved was when we said, back, I said, I'm from, you said, you have to mess it, so I said, you're behind me. You go to you. <laughs> Archibald? A Josiah? Is there a Josiah here, please? Sorry, I, could you repeat that, please? And just to reiterate to the camera, although we can hear sounds coming out the speaker, they're not immediately obvious to us. On occasions they are, sometimes we can hear with crystal clarity, and it's only when I've actually gone through the EVP, recorded on the camcorder, that I actually know what was being said. So it makes it a little bit fraught. But hopefully, we will hear something very positive. What I want to know, is life better where you are than it is on this plane? Do you enjoy your existence more where you are as opposed to where you used to be. Is the spirit plane a lot more special? I'm not sure I've known that, whether you feel any rain or not at all. Do you feel spiritual rain? Is there a vicar here? Can we talk to the reverend, please? I think they heard someone, you must be crazy, <laughs> come up and said that. The vicar, the priest in charge, Is there any parishioners here? Do you used to worship at the church? Are there any persons who were murdered? That's triggered something, isn't it? Right, well, I don't have to play that play back. Are there any victims of murder? People that were murdered, but were, but they're, the persons responsible for your murder were not tried or charged because your death was recorded as accidental or natural, but in fact you were poisoned or something terrible happened to you, and you seek justice against those people? Are there any persons in that unfortunate and terrible situation? Could you say something, please? Thank 
I know it's very difficult for you to make this level of communication. It's not easy to push out across the ether, but we would appreciate if there's anything that you could say or share with us, perhaps. There's not a lot of natural radio signals here, is there? We're not getting lots of music and stuff like that. Yeah. So, what we're picking up seems to be quite genuine. Making our ears see what we get when we uh, play back. Well, yeah, unfortunately, I would have to wait till then. Is there any farmers here? Are there any farm workers here? Are there any persons who are buried in unconsecrated ground? That caused a reaction with your headache. That did. Mm-hmm. Tell them why, isn't it? Start playing. Are there any persons connected with the church when it was when the church was destroyed? In the 1940s, are there any persons who were worshippers here who saw this, who saw the damage that was caused by allegedly a jet aircraft flying over the town, causing it to collapse? Do any of you miss being in this world? In the physical world, as we call it. Do any of you miss this? There are certainly yes. responses coming mm -hmm. over. Definitely responses. We what? hate to see it, we really do. It's a terrible thing what happened to that church, as with many other churches in Norfolk, unfortunately. Does anyone remember the pleasures of human flesh? Does anyone recall making love? Being in love? Yes. Can they recall the lady that they loved and they lived with? And any ladies recall the men they felt the same about? Does anyone miss having sex? Or do you still have that? Is there some kind of sexual contact that you have in the spirit world? Formed of spiritual love? Well, it's almost half twelve, mid, uh, past midnight here, so we are going to conclude this ghost box session. But we appreciate you for those that did communicate with us earlier, and we're very grateful to you. And we've been honoured to be here tonight, to be able to once more visit this beautiful church ruin. And we thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. We had a, a ghost box session inside the car. We certainly picked up some responses. Now, whether or not those responses are meaningful or not is going to be determined once I've edited the videotape. But I can say, before it started to rain very, very heavily here, it was certainly an interesting investigation. There was certainly an atmosphere inside that church ruin. And again, it's not uh, it's not threatening. It's quite uh, it's, it's it's quite benign. There's nothing at all edgy or threatening about it, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time here, but it's just sad the fact that, unfortunately, despite the BBC 
saying that it was going to be dry overnight, it descended into heavy rain. But uh, regardless, it was worth the experience of being here. I'll just put you over to Eddie very quickly. Okay, Eddie, what did you think of tonight, despite the rain? Well, we had the rain, and I'd have to say that there was definitely sort of feelings and that headaches uh, that I got uh, around the place quite strong, and they were spiritual headaches. At one point, I felt really, really pain in the chest, which I had this afternoon. That went as soon as we left the church. When they came back, bang, it was back again. So that was enough to know that was spiritual. So, yeah, it's weird how that goes, isn't it? Yeah, mm. it certainly is. It's quite amazing, really, when you get those feelings. One of the other ones I had when I first walked in, uh, after coming back uh, after tea, was a pain in the leg. And it felt like arthritis. It really felt like a strong arthritis pain, which I don't have fortunately in my leg. I've got practically everywhere else, but <laughs> uh, that uh, was very, very strange. And I suppose that was gone within five, ten minutes, where it was really nagging. Just to let you know, Eddie, isn't it? Eh? Just to let you know. Really nagging pain. But, and then you're, after but that, you're feeling okay went, now, right? Yeah, just yeah. went about five minutes. Five, ten minutes, I think we said, ooh, that's a bit painful. So overall, do you think we've got something on camera? I'm not going to put my neck out, but I'd like to say that we have. Yeah. And we wait and see if we get anything. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and Eddie, it's time to say good night. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm sorry that it's not a much more fuller show, but as you realise, we generally go to abandoned properties. Abandoned properties don't have, generally, cover covering points where we can stand and film. And tonight was a particular case in point. So regardless, I think we did pretty well considering the circumstances. And I'm looking forward again to our next investigation. Yeah, indeed. And there's hope and that we've got something on the can. Okay, well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good night. Good night. Good night.